What's up, guys? Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. Squarespace just released Refresh, which is their announcement about all the new features that are coming soon to Squarespace. So, in today's video, I want to take you through all of the new features that they've announced and walk you through the ones that I'm most excited for. They are heavily announcing a lot of AI tools that they're releasing, and those are not the ones that I'm most excited for. So I'm going to go ahead and just skip ahead to finish layer and we can come back to the AI features that they're releasing after this. So finish layer is really exciting. So these are customizations that you can do and add to different blocks in Squarespace and they're like interactions. And you can see there's these different triggers that you can apply to the interaction. So you can do on hover, so hovering over an item, press would be like, you know, when you click down on something, then you can trigger an animation. Loop just means, you know, you can do some animation that will just continuously loop over and over and over again. So you can kind of picture like maybe an item just sort of like slowly sort of animating a little bit, but infinitely in a loop. Appear, I'm guessing, is either just when that item appears into the viewport it's triggered or maybe appear is just like on page load. As soon as the page loads, that block could start its animation because scroll could also mean when it's scrolled into view or maybe it means it's animating sort of in lockstep with the scroll. So like as you're scrolling down the page, then maybe the image is getting wider. And then when you scroll back up, maybe it would get smaller. So I'm not totally certain on what these two triggers could mean, but I'm super excited to, <laughs> to find out. And then follow is like the block animation would follow the cursor essentially. So I actually have a plugin that kind of works like that so I can illustrate this. So you can see all of the, the image blocks here in this section are reacting to the position of my mouse cursor. So that's what this animation will be. So basically, you know, as you move your mouse through the section, you can have an animation react to the mouse position. So super cool feature there. It'll be nice to not have to do something like this with code. So super excited for all of these block animations. It looks like, you know, there's going to be tons of customization opportunities there. And then we also have these block transforms. So not necessarily animations themselves, but we can apply different transform properties to blocks without needing CSS, which is really cool. And then you can choose your like anchor position. So if you want to scale it from the top left hand corner or you know, the bottom right hand corner. So very cool. It looks like we get a lot of customization opportunities here. And then next we have responsive editing, which is really exciting. So basically here we have this new layers panel. And so on mobile, we can show or hide content on mobile separate from desktop, which is really exciting. So you see, we can have this little eyeball icon and hide something. Very cool. Mobile overrides is really exciting too. So basically right now, the only sort of independent customizations you can do are like the block position. And then there's some, you know, like the vertical alignment can be changed, but horizontal alignment can't be changed independently on mobile from desktop. Like if you left align a button block, for example, it also left aligns it on desktop as well as mobile. But now will have independent mobile overrides to where I can have a button centered on desktop, but left aligned on mobile or vice versa, left aligned on desktop, but centered on mobile. So that's really exciting because right now we have to use CSS for those types of changes when really we should be able to do it through the editor, which we'll now be able to do, which is really cool. And then stacks, they didn't add a sort of visual graphic, but this one is super exciting. So basically we can arrange, align and distribute blocks in a fixed order with even more responsive control over your layout. So how I picture this working is sort of like how Figma works. And so basically like everybody knows the pain of the blocks in the grid and trying to get their alignment correct. So like basically like all of these blocks are just independent of each other and trying to get everything to be sort of like spaced out properly is really difficult like this text is too close to the image it's too far from the buttons because the buttons you know have this extra space here so you try and clean that up and then that happens and then you clean this up and that happens and there's just like all sorts of 
annoying little spacing issues that can arise and you it, you do a lot of like okay maybe this needs to be centered while this needs to be top aligned but then there's too much space here or whatever you know there's a lot of fiddling right now to try and get spacing to work with the current like fluid engine grid system. So with stacks, how I interpret this to work in the future is basically how Figma works right now. So I can illustrate it in Figma. So basically here, imagine these are all the elements I'm gonna be working with. These are all my like blocks. And then this content element is gonna be the like Squarespace grid. So right now we can just like freely drag the, dr the blocks around the grid. But it's really difficult in Squarespace, as I illustrated, to get the spacing between things correct. So now we'll be able to group elements and create what they're calling stacks in Squarespace. So in Figma, that's an auto layout. So basically, you can determine sort of like how things are related to each other. So right now, I'll just center all of these things, and all of these items are in a stack. But then I want my buttons next to each other. So I'll create like a stack or an auto layout in Figma, and I can choose the direction whether I want it to be vertical or horizontal. I want it to be horizontal because I want these two things to be next to each other. So I'll group them and then I'll put them next to each other. So now these two, two buttons are in a stack and I can determine whether they should be you know, on top of each other or beside each other, which is awesome. And then I can control the space between these two items really easily as well. So that's the benefit of being able to group items is you can control the individual spacing. Whereas right now in a section in Squarespace, the whole the spacing is for the whole grid. So if I want these buttons to be farther apart, I can't just make my buttons farther apart. It makes everything farther apart. Now my images are too spaced out where I just want the more space between the buttons. So it gives us more control over the individual spacing of elements in a section just because we can group different elements. So maybe I want more space between like the buttons and the text. Well, I'll just group all of the text and then have that be a vertical stack. And now I can just change the spacing between the two stacks. So because my outer frame is a stack and then I have a text stack and a button stack, if I click on this one, I can just change the spacing between the text and the button. And I have full control there. And right now it's like, it's pretty difficult to get the spacing between paragraphs, you know, perfect in Squarespace. But with stacks, you can see we have like so much control over the spacing of elements where right now we're just super limited to the grid spacing, which is not ideal. So stacks did not get a lot of love in the Squarespace refresh, but if I'm interpreting it correctly, I think this is going to be like the biggest and best, most exciting change coming to Squarespace because spacing is such a difficulty right now in Fluid Engine, and this will solve all of that. If you're interested in learning about stacks when it comes out, then please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll have tons of tutorials coming out about all these new features in the future. So these are by far the features that I'm most excited for, but there's some other really cool ones. So uploading a custom font right now, we have to do it through the CSS, but there's going to be this new upload system where you can upload the custom font to the fonts panel and then apply it. So we won't have to use custom CSS anymore. We can do it through the editor, which is amazing. There's a bunch of changes coming that are AI related, which honestly, as a web designer, I'm not as excited for. I like all of the design tools, but all of these sort of like AI tools, I think are not as helpful. But I do want to point out that there are some that look a little bit interesting. So the AI site scanner, for example, being able to like scan your site for broken links and things like that, I think will be really helpful and is a perfect application of AI. The things that I'm not as excited for are like an AI product composer, AI discount composer, like generally, if you're going to set up a discount, you kind of know what you're going to want it to do. You don't really need to rely on AI for that. So I think some of these things are just not as helpful. For example, there's a lot of AI stuff. Their blueprint AI system helps you set up the website faster with AI. So there's these like new chat features that they're coming out with where you can just like 
chat with the AI system and say, you know, I want a guitar website and I like purple and it'll basically create a template for you, which I guess is great. If you don't know anything about web design, that's cool. But as a web designer, I just will never use that feature. Squarespace GPT is the same thing. So it's basically inside of chat GPT. You can go to the Squarespace website builder and just chat with it and then it'll create a template and then kick you over to Squarespace to actually finish building out the template. So sort of cool, I guess, in theory, not something that I will ever use. Same for AI image backgrounds and AI video backgrounds. You know, I, I just probably will never use these things, but they could be helpful for some people. And so, yeah, there's other, if you want to come in here and kind of check out some of the other features that they're announcing, they're not as interesting, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. So again, super exciting tools coming to Squarespace. If you want to see all of the tutorials that I create when those tools are released, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.